everyone. We're on to the next episode, and what I wanted to work on today was actually the parts that I've already done in red. So just as a quick little recap, these have been done in the um, with just the ink tint. So I did exactly the same thing, just kind of put the red down. I did do it a little bit heavier um, as far as just really making sure that I covered everything. Um, and then go went ahead and activated it. So as we can see here, which let me go ahead and bring you out a little bit. As you can see here on his arm, that's had a lot more color added to it than what I started with. And that's what I'm going to do today. But I'm going to go ahead and start uh, up here on his hat and start putting in my colors and my shading and kind of getting that extra dimension. And I thought I would show you. All right, so as yesterday we, or the other day uh, we had with the hair, I have all my little numbers and my little recipe, but here's my jacket. And just to let you know, this was done with the Ink Tense 0500, which is the chili red. And then now I'm going to be going in with my Polychromos Fabric Castell, and we're going to start with the PC Red Violet, which is 9201, let's see, 194. Now these should be in some semblance of order. We'll see. Uh, I was hoping. Ah, you know what the problem is? It's not in there. This is one of the extra ones I think that I have per picked up along the way. Sure enough, there it is. So as I said before, I only have a 36 set, but I have picked, oh, sorry, that was really loud again. Um, so I have picked up a, um, additional pencils along the way. Uh, this is something I think I'll continue doing for my fabric castells is just picking them up as I use them. Luckily right now, the, uh, the colors that I have have been working really great with this book and I've not had to go out and get any more. So all I'm going to do is start around the edges, any place that I felt like I would want it a little bit darker. Again, this is your 194. This is the red violet. And using just my little circles to kind of get it in there but that's all I'm going to be doing is just kind of going around now one of my thought processes here oh, let me go ahead and zoom you in a little bit hopefully that will there it goes um, is that these little I don't know what you would call these little appliques or whatever that they're kind of sewn in so I want a shadow around them and you know what I first need to do and I should have done this before I even started is I should really be prepared to have these sharpened because uh, there's some little tiny details and I want to make sure that my pencils are sharp and let me go get my sharpener all right so here I am back that's just love my little Crayola tin that I have. I actually keep my sharpener and all of my little shavings while I'm sharpening in it. Let's see. And I'm getting to see it. It's really kind of cute. All right. So I do want this kind of sharp. It'll help me get into some of those crevices as well. But something I was saying in the other episode, and I'll say again, is the uh, ink tints really do a nice job of putting down plenty of color so that I don't have to use a lot on my uh, of, of sharpening on my Faber-Castells or even my Polychromos uh, because that layer of color kind of helps save them so and I really have been happy about that because I really don't you know this, this like with the reds even for every time that I have to use in his coat or every time we see hook it could really eat away. If I had had to do all of this with my polychromos, uh, that could have really eaten away at the pencil. The other thing is, is that the Derwent ink tints does not burnish or damage the paper in any way. And gives a slight, I mean a very minor extra tooth to the paper. Now this paper is lovely in this book, so luckily that's not been really an issue. Why did I even bother with my ink tints? It's because I wanted a very intense color in these books. And there's also another one, Alice in Wonderland. And I really, really want to do that in, you know, the very bright, vibrant colors. I do a lot of flower type books and a lot of things that I end up, you can get some bright colors, but 
um, it's not like it's a borderline um, cartoon almost and that's kind of what these illustrations feel like so I really want that that very very nice um, feel of a intense colored book of course any place I see where there might be some shadows now this is going to be interesting because of course I'm going to have the shadow from the feather that's going to be hanging down here and my idea right now is these feathers are going to be all black but I'm I'm um, I, I still think I'm going to keep them all black to kind of to mirror what's going on with his hair and his moustache but I do want to put a little bit of a shadow so we're going to start with this to kind of mark out my shadow Something I did notice is it looks like there's this little bit here and at first I probably obviously thought that was a feather but what it looks like is the feathers curling around and that's actually the hat itself. So I'm going to take a moment before I forget and I figured this way it's great. You can at least see how I colored in with the red. Oh, it's also loud with all the mechanical. So I'm going to go in and grab my chili red and I just want to show you make sure this is in there that how I do it pretty I don't know it's kind of heavy with the ink tints so this is the Derwent ink tints cherry red and so as you can see that is how much I'm coloring so it's a little different than how I've done his hair or even up here because up here it was just kind of like stripes and it was in different uh, the different color shades here I want this to be a pretty intense red um, so my base color needs to be very intense. Now I am not, you know, pushing really hard, but this is a pretty solid uh, amount that I'm putting on here so that I can get full coverage. So I just wanted to go ahead and do that. And I'm not going to activate it right now. You've already seen whenever I activate. I might activate it in a little while, largely because I am working in this area and I don't, I don't want to uh, have a wet area, but also to go get the paint or the water I should say and the paintbrush and all that I just wanted to do that while I was seeing it plus you could see that I did color entirely in and that is how I did all these other parts so all the other parts so that is just the first thing that I need to actually activate or it sounds like activate wonder twin powers um, to with the water to make it the ink so I'm going to continue on, and I'm picking up again just my uh, uh, 194, the red violet. Again, just kind of doing some shading along here. going to move to some of the other parts of the red since I've already got this out here and the whole idea is to get this all done this helps me I find that by doing you know it in stages like this like going in and doing this first it helps me remember where I'm at and what I'm doing and um, without getting too confused so I kind of am working all over the page in this case um, to finish and to work on his jacket anything that is the the red
So because the hair is lying on top of the jacket, I do think of it as providing somewhat of a shadow. Again, I've really not paid attention or really thought about where my light source is coming from, and I know that's really a faux pas, but I just, I don't feel confident having that discussion and talking about position of lighting and all that. I kind of just go with my gut on a lot of these. These are coloring pages. This is kind of my experimentation to see what I like, see what I'm picking up, what I don't like. Um, so I don't, but I do feel like, you know, any place that the hair is probably sitting, there's probably at least a light shadow um, that's covering it, or coming from it, I should say. You know, this up here to me, this little area right up in here, you know, not only is his, his wonderful hair and beard and or all of the above, uh, probably his hair is going to be, sh you know, really having a shadow, but you're also going to have from his arm. So this is just naturally going to be a little darker. There's just not a lot of light that can get in there. All right, so according to my handy dandy recipe, if I look at the next one, we're actually looking at 225. So I'm going to put this back in here. Uh, 225 is considered dark red, and I believe what I do is we'll just start back up where I was at up here at the top. And this is where, you know, I like going over it again. Uh, I want, I kind of was using that as shadow, and then we'll bring it into our present color. Uh, this is just going to intense it. And again, I know I'm covering everything I did with the Derwent ink tints. However, I sure in the heck am not having to do it at as hard or with as much because I have that lovely red background already. So as you can tell, that coloring in took me a lot less time than if I had not had um, that base down. So the next color that, according to my handy dandy recipe, is number 219, and that is this scarlet red. So obviously doing a little bit of a lift here, and again just going over, and you're seeing I'm blending these out a little bit. Um, I want the scarlet red really to be around the edges and then I'm probably going to need to go back in because I've lost a little bit of my shadowing. I can still see it but it's definitely not as prevalent, pre prevalent there we go, as it once was. But this uh, scarlet, so yeah, let's make sure that's, so yeah, the deep scarlet red 219, um, it's really bringing it out and making it look a lot even more red which is great, that's that's what I was hoping for, and what I'm, you know, and again, when developing these color recipes, there probably is a color that you're like, well, I don't even see it anymore, why did you start with it, and why are you continuing with it? When I'm doing something like this, you know, I don't mind having, number one, to do the layers, as you would know if you've watched my videos, I'm very much content with that, um, but I, Often, you know, the recipe, it's kind of like some of the things that we put in a recipe, we don't quite understand what their role is in that recipe. Well, I don't know for sure what that role of that particular color, it, you know, it changed it. The hues have changed. So when I go to put the next layer on, if my end result was something I liked, I don't really want to mess with something that was working. So... Um, and the point of a coloring book to me is 
to color. So going back over and coloring. And with doing these ink tints, you know, I'm getting through other or, or pages quicker. So even though I really like the slow process, you know, getting through some stuff here and there is nice to have some finished and it kind of keeps spurring me on. So I like having these different methods. Some are a little bit faster, some are a little bit slower. You know, it's like I am the queen of 30 minute meals. Okay. If it takes more than 30 minutes and I'm practically saying, even if you've got me doing 30 minutes, even for the prep of it is included in that 30 minutes. I don't do as well. I have a tendency to forget steps. I have a tendency to leave things out. Or, you know, it just, I, having multiple things cooking. So I'm not a very good cook. But if it's 30 minutes or less, usually I do pretty well. Now, my husband, whoo, that man, he can do, you know, a five hour cooking session and come out, everything comes out on the table perfectly hot, steaming, and tasting wonderful. And, he enjoys that full long process so when i'm coloring i'm more like my husband i love those really long processes but every once in a while it's nice to have a quote unquote 30 minute meal here <laughs> with my coloring where i can get through some pictures and really feel like i'm making some progress because i do have a lot of coloring books don't we all <laughs> and i kind of have to keep pushing myself because if i you know, I'll just keep buying more and not finishing any, and I want more pictures. I there's very few of my books that I don't like, which is a good thing. So as you can see, this red is starting to look more like this on the sleeve, and actually, what you might see me do is actually pulling some from my sleeve into there. Now I still have not done, let's see if you can see it down here, these little sections down here. So, um, but I'm going to just keep working on this and really showing you the darker. So the next thing that I like to do is I'm going to come back in and put my shadows in a little bit heavier. And I am going to be doing that with my black with this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen it because I don't, you know, it's, uh, I'll be getting into some little intricate little spots. Um, and then I'm going to come back in with that red violet to kind of do a blend of the black. You know, I am dying to have some tea right now, but a couple weeks ago, whew, it was really sad. I was working, I had just gotten a brand new book. It was Romantic Country. It's the original one. I've never colored in the Romantic Countries uh, prior to this, so I was sitting down. And I was working on it. it. Was I think it was a Sunday morning or something. And I had my lovely cup of tea and all that. And lo and behold, and I kept telling myself, you need to move your tea or you really shouldn't be drinking tea or I need to do it in a different way in some type of closed cup. And sure enough, you know, after thinking that and not doing anything like moving it around like I should have, um, I knocked my tea and it went all over my book. Now, it was very funny because it was save the book. You had to save the book, definitely. Uh, you know, down the walls. And luckily I was very, very quick and was able to get most of it. But oh my gosh, it went all over it. The good news is, too, is that Romantic Country book is kind of an off-white. So uh, the tea stain actually just kind of added to it. But it's only because I got it picked up as quickly as I did. Now, I did go all over my walls and all my wood floors and all that but you know that was secondary to save the coloring book you know that was the most important thing but I just thought it was ironic so now every time that I'm doing this I want to have a cup of tea but uh, I just think about that and I'm like oh it's not gonna work as well like this book is white the pages are, are white so that's you know a tea stained Captain Hook is not what I'm looking for now granted if I was doing an old ancient map or something that would work but, you know but unfortunately you know when you spill on a book it goes to other pages and it warps it and you know ugh. anyway oh and that's something else so that's something I like about the ink tints at least in this book um, unlike watercolors, it's not really warping the pages. It's not making them all wibbly wobbly. I mean, they're making it a little, you know, this one is not, oh, it's very noisy. Yeah, so I really have enjoyed that. Uh, again, you know, the ink just gets onto the paper. It's there permanently. So uh, I've also liked that it's not as warpy 
as the watercolors. Something else I was thinking about the other day, I haven't really seen people, other than people who've been artists for years and have their own set, I think Peta Hewitt there for a while, uh, really use like the Derwent's, um, their pencils. And I'm just wondering why that is. Um, perhaps I need to just Google or I need to go search out on YouTube to see if there are more people because I like these colors. I don't know that they marry with the colors that are in their pencil set, but um, I don't know. I'd be kind of interested in possibly picking up some of the Derwent uh, pencils or this a set, but I really don't need any more pencils. I know. I only have one. Well, I have two hands, but only one that I color with at a time. So really, do I need this many pencils? <laughs> of course I do. So as you can see, I'm just putting in the, the shadow here again, kind of going back over where I did. And then I'll come in with my next color and do even more of a blending. But I like coming in with the black after I've put a lot of other color, you know, the color that I'm looking for. Because then it really does just make a shadow versus you know, you don't notice that it's black, so it just it, it's, it just makes it a more intense color of red, which looks more like a shadow. And now down onto his coat. And again, I kind of want this to feel like it's been sewn, so I kind of like that darker, like it's kind of indented, I guess is kind of the idea. So I picked up another coloring book that has um, kind of like wallpapers in it. Um, and I'm kind of interested in messing around with that. Uh, you know, it's, a lot of them are like floral wallpapers and stuff, but when I did my Chinese New Year for 2017 one, and I saw how it kind of ended up looking a little bit like fabric, it kind of started making me go, I want to do, you know, more clothing, more fabric, and that's what's been kind of nice, because this book and then my Sherlock Holmes that I've recently done, of course, has given me a lot more opportunities to kind of, to do that as well because fabric, you know, has a softness to it, and it's, um, I've always been fascinated, you know, between fabric and, like, scrapbooking papers and things like that, I, it just, I love getting color inspiration and color, um, ideas of how colors go together by looking at fabric and what they've put together, especially more of your floral, almost like Jacobean type, um, fabrics and stuff, so, um, I might at some point, actually bring that out and show you how I can get inspiration from something like that but uh, you know tapestries they were painting with thread and that's something that I love 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 to look at the same thing with embroidery I used to do a lot of embroidery when I was younger and um, I never really learned how to do it but I wish that that I had learned better but I like getting inspiration from uh, embroidery as well because again especially Whew, some of those artists that use the silk threads, it's just amazing to me.
right, so I'm going to put that one back up, and then I'm going to go grab again over here my 194, the red-violet, and I'm going to use that. Now, remember, this is what we originally used for shading, but now I want to kind of blend the black. If I can get that in there. Blend the black with it and make sure that it's definitely a red shadow versus just, you know, like a black line. So I'm kind of using it as a blender. And with Faber-Castells, they, they are amazing blenders, I will say that. I can get a lot of layers with them. Um, I do pretty well my Prismas, but these seem to just really, they do start out kind of light. Now, again, it doesn't look like it here, and that's great because of those, the base being the ink tints, but, um, you know, they are something to build up. You don't get dark colors immediately with these, and I know there's some great colorists out there that I've been, you know, that I watch and stuff that use them. And their work has a tendency to be that almost a soft pastel look on most everything they do. And I think these are wonderful for that. Getting them to get to this darker color, sometimes I find I have to really help them out or do so many layers. And so in this case, I'm helping them out by putting that uh, the ink tints down first as the base color. So remember, it starts out there and I haven't activated that yet. So hopefully you're seeing kind of that there's a, a shadow that we're we're kind of messing with here and we're starting to develop as if it's coming from the shadow of the feathers. And giving us some some movement but still a very intense red I am kind of just using this as a blender this this time around and extending out just a little bit into that red again I really like using my little ovals the way that I color with my ovals because I just don't get those lines Unless, you know, that's what I was wanting whenever I was doing his hair. pretty happy with it. I have to tell you I'm not enjoying this as much. I think I've missed uh, a couple shadings that I might want to go back in and try to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the sleeve here uh, to do a little bit more. But basically that is really where I'm at. I, uh, I'm thinking to go back over with my, I don't know if I want to do the scarlet red or do I want to do the dark red. I think I want to do scarlet one more time. So why don't we do that before I close up for today. We're going to do this deep scarlet 219 and just kind of go over everything one more time. And I again, this isn't taking me very long, which is rather surprising. But I guess I really shouldn't be that surprised considering that I know that the Derwents really cover lovely, and the color, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how saturated feeling it is. You know, it's, it's kind of going for that red, velvety look, and I think we're, we're getting there with it, that's for sure. Um, but 
And I, you know, I don't even know for this if I'm going to bother going over with Gamsol. Um, I'm really liking the intensity. I don't think I'm going to need to. There's a part of me says go ahead because I don't know that I've went over with anything Gamsol that I've done the ink tints underneath. But um, I really am liking the intensity of this this red and how it's coming out. So I don't know that I even feel like I would need to blend. Um, at this point. It seems to be blending well with the colors on top of one another. But I don't, like I wouldn't even take a blender pencil to this. I, I really, it's done such a beautiful job. I'm thinking that's really all I need to do. And this red just lifts it, this uh, deep scarlet that I'm putting on here, just lifting it yet a little bit more color wise but I am putting it over even where we went with the black and the the other the shadows and it kind of I always find that when I go back over with one single color it kind of unifies everything um, without you know really blocking out now granted if I went over this all in black it would look really different but um, I'm liking that a lot in fact yeah see this is this is what happens I start really start playing and sometimes I get lost in what I've done and how, you know, but at least I've got the guidance. So the next thing that I'd like to come in is really working on this one here. And then, of course, I've got some black here. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do because this black should be a lot darker. Look how dark his, his hair is. I mean, this if I want this to be a black shirt, this should have even darker color to it. And this is one of the problems I have with the blacks, period, in the Faber-Castell as well as the Polychromos is getting them as dark as sometimes I really want that black to be and that's why I went back over with that Micron for the hair so I might have to do something but I don't know what in here um, you know there's a part of me almost wants to go and put acrylic across the acrylic paint but I'm gonna lose those little hearts and I think it's kind of a neat little look so we'll see how I figure that one out so for right now, I'm kind of done with this. I'm going to go on and work on the bottom part down here, uh, doing the red, see, down here and around his jacket some more. And probably the next time that I'll see you, I'll either be working on this gold, or actually what I'll probably do is put in the gold down in the bottom. You can't even see what I'm pointing to, silliness. Um, down here, uh, there's a lot of gold accent down here that I want to put in, so I'll do that starting with my ink tints as well, I think. But we'll see. Just stay tuned. We'll be moving along Captain Hook, and I still have not decided what I want to do for the background. Ah, decisions, decisions. Well, I hope you're enjoying your day, and I hope you're enjoying watching me color the dastardly Captain Hook here. And, uh, you know what? We still need to do some of this face. This man has got to get himself to a tanning booth. Hmm. Maybe that's what I need to do next. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Stay tuned. Who knows where I'm going to go next? But I hope you're enjoying your coloring. Keep coloring those pages, and I will speak to you soon.